Hey, Avid Max Fly Tires. Welcome to Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to show you how to tie a bubblegum midge. This is a cool little emerging midge pattern that utilizes a glass bead for that gas bubble that gets created on the midge larva when they start to emerge. It's a pattern created by Umpqua Signature Tire, Scott Boyles. A little pattern that utilizes a few natural materials, some CDC and some quills. Traditionally, it's tied with the Polish quill. I have just a regular peacock strip quill that I'm going to use today. And to start out with the hook in the vise here is the 2487, TMPO 2487. And then the thread we're using today is a Vivas 60 knot. This is just the done color, which is going to match nicely to kind of the natural variation that I'm doing today. I went ahead and positioned my bead. I'm going to push it just about a hook eye back and that's where we're going to start our thread there. You can see I started and worked a little ways back kind of with that as my marking point because that's where we want our bead to end up inevitably when we get done here. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and strip off all of the feathers off of our peacock curl. So I just like to use my thumbnail and kind of strip it backwards until we get a nice clean quill to work with. Very brittle material. You can see it kind of starts to shape and bend with me. We want to get all of that hurl off of there. And then we'll tie in. This is just our body wrapping, our underneath body wrapping. Get it nice and clean, all that green stuff off of there. So you have something fully clean so it looks like that throughout. And then once we have that prepped and ready, we'll go ahead and just tie it in right on the side of my hook shank here. Just make sure you have enough to cover your whole body, a nice fine material. So it'll be nice touching close wraps. I'm gonna walk on down the band a little ways past that barb and add some curvature to this pattern before I bring it on up. And again, just using where I ended my thread right here as a stop position, don't wanna go any further forward than that. Taper it down just a little bit and on back up. And then we can half hitch in that position and bring our stripped peacock quill on up. So we'll pull it out 90 degrees off of the shank and go ahead and wrap it forward. And nice touching wraps. So the Peacock Quill offers a nice natural brown option. You can get some of the Polish quills to add some coloration and do it in a world of colors. You can also substitute biots if you don't have the Polish quills accessible. You can do a nice turkey biot in dyed colors to help provide some variations and some options for you. We'll work that on forward. Nice firm touching wraps to where our thread is positioned. And then we can capture it off in that location. We'll just pass it over. Capture it with a wrap. We'll do a wrap in the front. And one more behind to secure it there, and we can trim that excess out. From there, we're going to tie in the emerging wing on this, which is just a bit of CDC oiler puffs. I'm using the natural done for this. Blends nicely with that peacock and then the hairs ear dubbing we're going to use here in a minute. So we'll grab a single puff out of the package. I like to grab it by the stem and pull all those fibers up and out of the way a little bit. You can wet it get them to behave with you if you'd like. And just make the material a little bit easier to work with. And we'll go ahead and tie that in right on the back facing rearward. Try and keep most of the puff back and out of the way because we're going to utilize that when we fold it up and over. So we'll do a few securing wraps and then I'm going to sneak in and clip out that stem. Sometimes you can trap it underneath your bead. Get it out of the way. Let's 
secure and then just make sure that that bead's gonna slide up and over on top of all of that, just like so. But before we do so, I'm gonna add a little bit of dubbing to the back end and we'll blend this through a little bit. So this is the Hair's Ear Plus dubbing from Hairline and this is the Dark Hair's Ear color. It's a very picky dubbing, so I like to use a little bit of low tack Swax from Loon to help create a super sparse dubbing noodle out of it. And I want some more of those under fur, some of the picky fibers, but some of that nice fine under fur out of here as well. And noodle that up real nice, just to do a couple of wraps right behind the bead. And that'll act as a bit of a prop for us. But again, make sure you don't work forward on this. You need quite a bit of room for that last piece. Once we have that dubbing in place, let's go ahead and whip finish this real fast. Just a couple of quick turns here, secure everything off. Make sure not to build too much bulk there so that you can pull that bead back and over everything once more. And to help that, we're gonna Position it in place and then we can start some thread wraps right in front. To kind of push it back on it. We'll sneak our thread right on in. And work that back and secure everything in place. From there, we're gonna pull our CDC puff right on over top of that dubbing and as well the bead. And we'll go ahead and capture that in front, spin my thread counterclockwise to get a nice reverse loop. And secure that down. I always tend to pull that CDC puff right back and up against that bead, kind of tighten my wraps, and then I can sneak right in front of it with one quick one. And then we're gonna add just a little bit more of that Here's Ear Plus dubbing. Again, to blend throughout. Very, very sparse amount this time. I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room there. I'm just gonna wrap that right in front of that CDC puff. Sneak up under it a few times. Helps to get it to stand out nice and vertical against the hook shank. And all we're left with is a nice finishing whip finish right behind that hook eye. It's a great little emerging insect pattern that you can fish year round. It'll bring you a lot of success in the winter time, especially on some pressure tailwaters where there's a heavy concentrate of midge populations that the fish are targeting and eating throughout the year. But really an elegant midge emerger. You trim down your CDC if you felt like it was necessary. You could also leave it long and do that on the river, uh, make it a little bit adaptive. Let's tie some up in some different sizes, try and use some, some different colors and, and match the hatch in your area and it'll bring you a lot of luck.